I'd like to call this regular council meeting to order. Would you all please rise for the invocation? We meet to serve our community and endeavor to be worthy custodians of all that has been entrusted to us. Let us be concerned only for what will promote good government. May we bring to our council chamber minds that think and hearts that feel, so that in our deliberations we may display imagination, wisdom and courage, and the will to do our work for the good of all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, the roll call, please. All members of council are present, Your Worship, with the exception of Councillor Luberts. Thank you. We have, uh, interestingly enough, a plethora of addenda this evening. Uh, I think four altogether, so I'll start from the beginning. The first had to do with correcting the name of an appointee or proposed appointee to the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee, uh, Riel, uh, Owen Riel, and that is business item 10E. The second had to do with uh, the cancellation of the special council meeting uh, at 5 o'clock today. That matter will be dealt with during the course of the meeting. We'll, we'll move into closed session. Um, and uh, I'm presuming that, Madam Clerk, this is something that we can go into closed session for? Okay. Uh, the third addendum had to do with uh, modification of a bylaw due to the cancellation of the special uh, meeting so that the confirmatory bylaw has been amended to show the order of uh, the agenda. And then the fourth had to do with uh, a memo that was missing from bylaws, two memos, bylaw 58, 2018 and 59, 2018. Those have now been provided to members of council and they are available for review. They didn't go to the um, merits of the bylaws, but rather the background explanation for councillors. Just a couple of announcements. The first announcement had to do with, uh, has to do with uh, Earth Day, which uh, we just experienced this weekend. Number of cleanups throughout the town. And um, one in particular uh, held down in Crystal Beach. Phil Smith uh, organized and, and uh, helped to um, feed uh, the individuals who showed up for that. Uh, fair number, I think there were about 50 people that showed up. Uh, they did have some, he did have some assistance from the Crystal Chandelier, which helped to provide some food, and Turkstra Lumber, which provided some of the uh, material. And uh, the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee was out at Waterfront Park. I was working very hard. I think the kids were watching me. No, they did an excellent job, picked up about uh, a dozen bags of garbage. So that was very nice. And I know that there were events that uh, were going on in other places throughout the town, including individuals whom I saw uh, on the sides of some roads uh, with their own little bags and they were doing some of their own cleanup, so they're all to be commended. Um, this afternoon there was a, um, a horrific event that occurred in Toronto um, and um, uh, our hearts and, and thoughts and prayers go out to the families and the um, uh, uh, members of the community in Toronto. Uh, there were nine people so far who have lost their lives when uh, someone drove a truck off of the road onto a sidewalk uh, there's 16 people that are still injured, some in various states uh, of, um, of uh, injury, and uh, we hope that they will all recover. Uh, the investigation is ongoing. There's been no um, allocation of why, an explanation as to what occurred, other than this individual seemed to be uh, disturbed and uh, deranged. Uh, so we're, um, we send our... our um, heartfelt thoughts and, and prayers to those individuals and their families who lost their lives. Um, that takes us to disclosures of pecuniary interest. If there are none, that takes us to notice of upcoming public meetings of which there are no notices. That takes us to the Regional Councillor's Report. Good evening, Councillor Nunziata. Good evening, Your Worship, members of the Council, members in the gallery. Uh, I'll be brief, as brief as I as I can be. Just a quick reminder of the Niagara Police Services Board is set to hold its regularly scheduled meeting here at Town Hall on April 26th at 8.30 a.m. Part of the uh, Police Services Board's uh, commitment to making sure that uh, if there are any concerns, uh, certainly uh, those issues can be addressed at the board level and they're making their way around uh, Niagara. So we're appreciative of that. They'll be hosting here uh, at, at the Town of Fort Erie. Just a quick update on Public Realms funding. Uh, as you know, the region uh, initiated Public Realms funding uh, last year in the amount of $250,000. This year, uh, $250,000 was available as well. Um, I don't believe that the Town of Port Erie submitted uh, this year for Public Realms, but uh, just a, a quick update. 
Um, that program, uh, again, was oversubscribed uh, to the tune of $484,000 with a leveraged um, funding commitment of $2.28 million. So uh, it's a contribution at the regional level, but it does uh, en enable the leveraging of funds from uh, certainly the public sector as well. Uh, the total amount allocated this year is $250,000 with a local commitment of $1.84 million. So again, on a go-forward basis, we're going to see uh, um, how oversubscribed that program is. And just like our SNP program, just like our, our CIPs, if there's an opportunity to add more uh, towards the 2019 budget, then that's certainly uh, something that we will uh, consider at the, at the regional level. Um, a quick update uh, with respect to regional programs. I had the good fortune of meeting with Kelly Walsh and uh, Sean Hutton. And uh, the region of Niagara has engaged uh, MTER in enhanced services. Uh, so it was brought to my attention by some concerned residents that, uh, and speaking of Earth Day, uh, they're very vigilant and uh, they do a great job of, of walking the paths and going through our public parks and picking up garbage. Uh, but there isn't an opportunity to recycle. Uh, and uh, in their estimation, most of the garbage that they pick up is recyclable, whether it be water bottles, whether it be, um, um, you know, pop cans or, or something to that effect. Uh, so we did have a great discussion here. Now, the town uh, did commit, early, sorry, the region did commit earlier this year $21,000 to the town of Fort Erie for enhanced services um, through our local BIAs in Ridgeway and, uh, and uh, um, the Bridgeburg BIA. Uh, so at a total cost of $42,000 to purchase receptacles, the region kicked in $21,000. Uh, so now there's another opportunity, and uh, I'll leave it up to this council whether or not the appetite is here to budget a little bit more towards um, last uh, estimates, roughly 20 to 30 cans. Um, I know we're still putting together the cost on that, but there will be an opportunity to tap into more funding at the region. Uh, for 2018. Uh, I know the funding envelope is roughly $60,000. Uh, the town of Fort Erie just received $21,000. So moving forward, is there an opportunity to get more funding? I certainly hope so. Uh, but again, that's the appetite and the will of this council, whether or not you want to make the upfront commitment, knowing that there's a regional program in place for enhanced services at our public space and public parks. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I'm sure um, Mr. Walsh can uh, follow up with that. But again, uh, I'll leave that uh, with this council. Councillor Nunziata, my understanding is that the, um, that the contracts between uh, the region and the municipalities are, are about to be renegotiated so that there may be an opportunity for enhanced services. You've mentioned additional garbage cans. I don't know what the, what the situation is relative to recycling, and maybe Mr. Walsh has some information relative to that. That seemed to be one of the things that people were interested in, not only in our parks, but also in the downtown areas because there is a lot of material that could be recycled. Currently, that doesn't happen. Exactly, that does not happen right now. So I don't know what, we'd have to get into a whole new discussion about that, but I think I have, I did see your email about uh, two weeks ago with respect to that, did, uh, did reach out to Mr. Walsh to talk about that. So that's something that we, will, we can look at, A, as the municipality negotiates with the region for uh, any changes in the, the service, levels of service, and then secondly, with respect to the budget for 2019. Uh, does any, anyone else have any questions uh, uh, with respect to um, regional councillor's report? Councillor Pasiro. Uh, thank you, Rochelle. I don't know if it's a direct question to Councillor Annunziata, but just based on that uh, point you just made, I'm hoping that we push hard that the region funds this. Recycling and waste management is their gig. I cannot comprehend to this point why we are paying for half of containers and the cost of additional collection. So hopefully going forward that changes. I know there was some conversation as to it would require extra stops and pickups, but if you're going from point A to point B anyways, and we bring up the recycling to the curb, which we have the option to do that as well, I don't know why extra costs would be incurred unless the region probably is being billed per stop. I don't know how those arrangements work, but uh, to me it seems a little ridiculous why the region would be charging us uh, for collection containers as well as extra collections when recycling and waste management is their mandates, not our mandates. So I'll look forward to those conversations. Well, except we pay for all of the garbage that they pick up so that um, in, the, in the downtown business areas, as an example, um, somebody's got to pay for those um, garbage receptacles. It's not the BIAs, 
or the municipality than it would be the region. But uh, Councillor Nunzia, did you have anything to add to that? I, I, if that was a question, then I, I, I'll try to answer. So basically the receptacles that we're talking about, the program of enhanced services, um, we consider those street furniture. So they enhance the, uh, the streetscape certainly, uh, and th there's a cost to those, uh, whether they're decorative, whether they're recyclable, whatever. That's the cost that, the, that there's a cost sharing with, with the region right now. As far as an ongoing basis, I believe that that service costs about $4,000 a year uh, for that enha enhanced service collection. Uh, but for the street uh, furniture, the receptacles themselves, that's what we're talking about, the cost sharing. There's a $60,000 program at the region right now. Uh, cost of those receptacles through the two BIAs was $42,000, which was picked up half by the region. When, when people start sitting on them and using them as shelter, I'll consider them street furniture. Uh, until then, they're garbage containers and they're recycling containers. I think it's ridiculous that by changing the name, all of a sudden we're now on the hook for half. Just my opinion. Well, I, I think the point would be that if they weren't street furniture, the town would be paying for the whole cost. So this way there's a regional program that identifies it as street furniture, so therefore there's a program where they would, they would help offset some of the cost. If we have your worship residents who live on Jarvis Street, that's their address and they put bags to the side of the road, would they not be picked up as a resident yeah. living in the town of Fort Erie? They would be. Exactly. This, uh, we're talking, I believe, about garbage receptacles for people who are shopping in a downtown area or in a, in a particular area. So that's not household waste, which is what, or household recycling, which is being picked up now. In order for us to get recycling, we would have to negotiate that with the region. I agree with that. It, it's waste generated by people whether they're living at their house or walking down the street, where they deposit it to me really doesn't make a difference. It's all going to the same spot and under the same mandate as per the region. So that's why I'm hoping through these conversations we can straighten this out. I don't think we should be footing the bill for anything involving garbage collection or recycling collection. Well, Mr. Walsh, I believe we do, and I believe it's based on an assessment uh, basis, is it not? For the, uh, for the downtown areas, I just want to clarify something. We've got both uh, waste and recycling collection now. Uh, the blue bins were installed uh, late last fall. But uh, it is on a per container basis that we're, um, that we're charged for collection in the BIAs. And every place else, it's based on the town contributing to the cost on the amount of garbage that's collected or on an assessment base. Uh, I think Mr. Jansen could clarify that better. Jansen? The, yes, the town actually uh, takes the amount requisitioned by the, the region and sets a rate similar to the tax rates for collection based on assessment. But the charge from the region is based on what? The amount that they, that they collect by weight? I would have to revisit that. Uh, I believe it's it's they also assign it to the town based on assessment. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Vasiro, sorry to keep interrupting. You nope, just, that's you fine. Have the floor. That's all I have. I look forward to those conversations. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm I'm uh, totally for the fact that we would um, be able to get those recycling boxes. I know they're very expensive. I've tried to cost them out for my own business. Because they are decorative, they, they run quite high. It's not as simple. I understand um, Councillor Passero, and I, I agree with them on a certain level. But I do know that um, it would be it would be a little difficult to have just a plastic white bag out there available for people going up and down the BIAs. I did notice that there is a recycling um, receptacle there for the bottles. That's brand new on the uh, Ridgeway Core. So that was really very well um, received by the, the commercial district. I'd like to see more. I don't think there's enough on the, the street. So if we can up that limit, I'm certainly supportive of that. And I'm going to suggest, so um, Mr. Hutton uh, has all those metrics and all that data. And with respect to our public spaces, our public trails, and our public parks, uh, if there's an appetite to put those recycling uh, containers there as well, um, then I suggest get with Mr. Walsh and certainly Mr. Hutton, and uh, we'll, we'll move forward on that project as well. Okay. Anyone else who has any questions of the regional councillor? If none... That takes us to presentations and delegations, and our first delegation is Yvonne Hopkins, 
on behalf of the Friendship Festival. Good evening. Mike has been turned on. Mr. Mayor, Council, and staff members, um, I would just I just came to update you on the Friendship Festival and the uh, workings that have been going on for 2018. Oops, wrong button. I should never have a remote in my hand, ever. <laughs> Okay, let me introduce myself. My name's Yvonne Hopkins. I'm now the new flow. So um, I'm born and raised in Fort Erie. I have a Bachelor of Science, went to Brock University. Uh, it's in biology, urban environmental studies. Became a uh, professional student, went back to school, and had a post-grad business diploma. So I've worked many years in the not-for-profit industry as well as the public sector. Uh, I used to be called the turtle hunter here. <laughs> And I've spent many years uh, writing grants anywhere for uh, museums, the town, um, most recently the festival, Trout Unlimited as well. Also former volunteer of the Ontario Trillium Foundation. I was on the Niagara Grant Review team for nine years as their token environmentalist because they couldn't find anybody else at the time. And um, I'm on a number of local and regional committees as well. And uh, in between jobs, the uh, flow decided to uh, retire, and I happened to be at the right place, the right time, and uh, had the opportunity to take this on for 2018. So far, actions to date, we've decided to connect with the two post-secondary uh, institutions uh, with Fort Erie. We went to Niagara College, and they are going to do a new, brand new website and launch it for us. Uh, they looked at the current website and uh, they just decided to tweak it a little bit and make it a little more user friendly. We also uh, spoke with Brock University and Brock University, their post-grad uh, business uh, program, They're, they did a market study because we, we also observed that there is a distinct, uh, we're missing the 18 to 30 market basically. Uh, so that was what they decided to do, was go around and do target surveys and find out, you know, what does the 1830 people want? Like, what do they eat? What kind of music do they want to listen to? Will they buy things? Will they come to Fort Erie? How do they come to Fort Erie? Things like that. We're currently doing a request for proposals to do a new strat plan so that uh, we can reposition ourselves for 2019. We've also put in several funding and sponsorship proposals uh, for federal, provincial, regional, and private sources. And we've been successful in garnering, garnering support from Heritage Canada. NEPAM, uh, they provide funding that has helped us hire Dalton Bird. He's the volunteer coordinator, so you'll probably get about a pile of phone calls from him. And uh, we've also received funding from the Niagara Investment and Culture Program as well. Uh, and of course, without the core funding from the CGDC, we wouldn't be where we are. So we also did surveys using SurveyMonkey, as well as uh, speaking with the students. And basically, people want food. That's the big thing. That was the general undercurrent after, you know, you, we heard the negative comments and we, we put them you know, okay, we've heard you. And uh, basically, we went back to see who were the past uh, food vendors and how do we get them back? Why do you like, why won't you come back? So we did get Bob's Blooming Onion back and uh, we've got all smoked up. We do have a barbecue. Uh, that's the other thing, the 1830, they want barbecues. So we finally got one and we're working with another local one. I'm still talking to them, so I don't want to mention them and put them on the spot. I'd like to, but. <laughs> and we have a coffee truck. We've also asked what participants want. The majority of our uh, local residents, they miss the craft walk. Uh, we're actually partnering with the uh, uh, Aroma Bubbles and Friends, and she is in charge of getting the crafters for me, and she will be the site contact for the crafters. It, also with this, we decided to do a welcome package with the people that as they sign up, they're going to have a, a map of the site where they're located along with a site contact. So if there's any issues at that time, they talk to one person. So that 
I don't get 14,000 phone calls during the day, but the different site people will get it. For our day entertainment, we found, actually Cindy from Polka Dot Door found us, and she's coming in on Sunday. We have Geronimo Skydiving Team, and we're doing some fundraising because we can afford the basic package, but if we can get the really good package, they will jump out of a World War II plane. So if you squint your eyes, it's kind of an air show, but not really. Um, we also have ex-Pogo Stunt Pogo Jumpers. They're gonna come in on Saturday. Um, that's gonna be interesting. I'm kind of scared, but okay. <laughs> um, Sunday, we have Ultimates. People like animals, and these are rescue dogs and one rescue cat that will be doing some performances. Uh, the Bell Tower Sanctuary is going to be doing kids karaoke on Sunday. Um, we've been speaking with the food vendors and uh, wheeling and dealing, and they are willing to sponsor food for some eating contests. So you'll be seeing some eating contests. Safari Niagara is bringing Zooniversity as well, where they're going to show kids different animals. I'm not too sure why, but I'm hoping one's a turtle. So when is this year's festival? It's July 12th to the 15th. Now, uh, the reason why it's the third week of July, we are in a contract with Robertson's Amusements, and that's in a three-year contract, that this is where we can get our prime amusements and midway going for that week. So for July 12th and 13th, here's the schedule. As usual, the Thursday is the Toonie Thursday. Friday's wristband Friday with amusements. Our concert, we're still working with the concerts. We haven't decided whether or not it's gonna be a country night or a uh, uh, alternative type music night. July 14th, during the day, the theme with Geronimo skydiving is gonna be honoring our military past, present, and future. Um, I had put a phone call in through the links and winks and uh, I'm gonna see if they're willing to maybe come out and uh, possibly bring something to put on display. Uh, we're gonna have the War of 1812 reenactors, but we're gonna do like a time timeline, so it's not just the War of 1812, but we're gonna see hopefully World War II on to today. We also have the Boys and Girls Club sponsoring the Kids Zone this year and uh, art demonstrations. So our Saturday night is on the Giant FM concert stage and we have the Rock of 80s with Ruckus, they're from Welland, and Arms of America, which is John Janae, and it's a cover band for you uh, 2 Oops, I went backwards, oh, I'm telling you. July 15th is our Sunday. Normally Sundays are your downtime, but we're gonna try to amp up the entertainment, the, the day entertainment, with and make it more of a family-oriented day, along with a made in Fort Erie day where we're trying to highlight things at Fort Erie and uh, we're going to have some uh, black history, local history and hopefully some uh, sports personalities from past, present and future and that's where we're going to have the eating contest and there's a Miss, uh, yeah, Miss All Canadian Baby pageant. I'm not too sure what that's all about but they've signed on so should be fun. Oops. Honestly. So July 15th, we didn't come here to ask for money. We came here to invite you to participate in our dunk tank for COPE. So this should be quite uh, a surprise to COPE because I haven't told them yet. But we have a dunk tank that has been donated to us from uh, Virgil. And uh, we want to invite uh, the council and Mr. Mayor. We already have Wayne Gates. He has uh, confirmed. So now... <laughs> So we would like to invite you to participate in the dunk tank. And uh, we also wanted to let show you, oh. We, these are our, uh, so far our sponsors and our collaborators for this year. Uh, we have Robertson's and Niagara Trailers and Brock University. We still have more to add on to it. And uh, please come on out and see it. We are making some small changes and we're really excited. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's. Uh... That's very encouraging. It's pretty exciting. And is the dunk tank on the Sunday? Yes. We figured it's not going to rain that day, so. Well, it would uh, be good if it did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do any members of council have any questions? Okay. Councilor Pizarro. Uh, thank you, Worship. Thank you, Yvonne, for coming tonight and updating us. Firstly, congratulations, I think. Yeah, I think. accepting the position. <laughs> uh, I know you're 
you're going to do a great job of it. I've seen the hard work to date. I know that uh, myself and Councillor McDermott are in for the dunk tank and we pledge to work together to convince our colleagues. We'll see what we can come up with. I'm just wondering from a volunteer capacity point of view, I know that's uh, under Mr. Bird's purview, uh, but maybe between the two of you, what are you looking at in terms of numbers of volunteers, what kinds of people for volunteering, and maybe what types of positions are available? Uh, right now, uh, Dalton promised me 100 volunteers. Or he's fired. No. <laughs> uh, that was his interview. He says, oh, I can get you 100 volunteers. Uh, but uh, we, I don't think there is a number where we say that's enough. We'll take anybody, uh, uh, high school students, if they're looking for their, uh, uh, their volunteer time. Adults are more than welcome to come and volunteer. There are tens and, like, there's just a bunch of jobs you can do. Like, there's jobs where... Uh, I hate to say it, but there's like garbage handing out pamphlets, manning the uh, the barricades, uh, helping the uh, make sure that everything's AODA, you know, that people are parked in the proper places, uh, site supervisors, someone in charge of food vendors, things like that. Um, we've also put into a grant to HRDC to hire like an event coordinator. I haven't heard anything from them as well, so we're hoping to have an additional four staff members maybe by May. Excellent. So. And if somebody wants to be a volunteer or be a participant or a vendor, what's the best way to contact yourself or Dalton or somebody in the festival um, office? You could either call the office at 871-6454 or inquiry at uh, friendshipfestival.com or yhopkins at friendshipfestival.com. And I think everybody's got my cell phone out there too. So. Excellent. And please wait until I'm out of the dunk tank before you add the ice. Do it right <laughs> yeah. before Councilor McDermott gets in. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Yvonne. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Before you go, is there any other counselor that has any questions? Thank you very much and good All luck right. this year. I think it's going to be great weather. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that takes us then to Robert Makett, who I don't see. Yes. You're the substitute. How are you this evening? Your Worship. Mayor Redekop, members of town council and citizens of Fort Erie. On behalf of the board of directors of Community Living Fort Erie and the people and families who receive services, we'd like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak to you this evening. Our president, Bob Mikek, is could not be here tonight and asks that I speak to you on his behalf. For the record, you are? I am Vicki Moreland. Okay. And your assistant is? Yes. Oh. Swayze Lozon. Swayze Lozon. So I am Vicki Moreland. My role is Shared Executive Director with Community Living Fort Erie and Community Living Port Coburn Waynefleet began last July 1st. And we're here because May is Community Living Awareness Month. Community Living Fort Erie exists to promote inclusion and to ensure people with intellectual challenges have their rights and privileges upheld. In 1957, a few parents gathered right here at Town Hall in response to a newspaper ad placed by a parent of a child with Down syndrome, asking people to come together to try to meet the needs of their children. And for over 60 years since this founding meeting, we have advocated for the rights of people with intellectual challenges. It's important to our organization that we, we ensure that all people are given equal opportunity to make certain that all people have the right to live in their own homes as friends and neighbors to other Fort Erie citizens. We want to safeguard people's rights to be contributing members of their community. There are many things that we can do to improve acceptance in the community. We should treat others with the same degree of respect that we would like to be treated with. We should embrace our differences and not prejudge people based on their first appearances and impressions. As an organization, we hope that when people support move into new homes and neighborhoods, we ask that we work together to promote that acceptance. Spending time getting to know a person with a disability gives people the opportunity to see a person's gifts and talents, not just their disability. It's essential that together we raise awareness and promote acceptance so that people will take the time to learn about others and respect their differences. 
With the continued support of a strong community, we can move forward to ensure that all people are included regardless of disabilities. We need to ensure that all people are engaged in meaningful community-based activities of their choice and that our community is a place where people have the opportunity to fully and actively participate in all aspects of community life. We strive to assist people to follow their dreams, recognize their potential, and accomplish their personal goals as productive and respected members of this community. Thank you for the support you've provided. We look forward to the next 60 years of working with citizens of Fort Erie and to ensure that all people are included of, in the life of their community. And now, Swayze. Dear Mayor Radkop and members of council, hello, my name is Swayze Loza. I have been supported by Community Living Fort Erie for five years. Before moving to Fort Erie six years ago, I lived in a community where I did not feel accepted. I was bullied and often felt like I didn't belong. There were times that I didn't want to go to school because I felt like I didn't, didn't belong. Fort Erie has now been my home for the last six years, and two years ago, my family wanted to move to a different city. I did not want to move because I felt a sense of belonging in Fort Erie and felt included in, um, in my school and in my community. At this time, Community Living Fort Erie helped me to find a safe place to live and where I could stay at my school and stay in this community that I call home. Community Living Fort Erie has helped me connect to different volunteer placements in my community. I have volunteered at Gilmore Lodge in, in the feed-in program and in the kitchen. I also volunteer once a week at the YMCA at the membership desk and in the children's program after school program. I volunteer at, I want volunteer with YMCA summer camps and March break camps and I feel like a valuable member of their camp team. With Community Living for Erie support support in the Tay program, I have got my safe food handling certificate and my first aid and my CPR certificate. I work at the Pomegranate restaurant at my school and volunteered at Community Living for Erie, working at the front desk and answering phone calls. I will be graduating this year from GFest as I start to enter into adulthood. Community Living Living will support me to get a job and hopefully go to college one day. I know that I have the skills and support to reach my goals. I know that success looks differently for everyone, but for me, being a valuable member of my community is the most important part. I am kind, helpful, funny, and I care about others. I know that people in this community accept me for who I am because I have so much to offer offer this community and I'm worth getting to know. Community Living has helped me to see how valuable I am to this community and encouraged me to set goals for myself because they believe in me and what I am capable of. I am a part of I I am a part of my community. I am proud of who I am and I am excited to see what goals I will accomplish and with the support of Community Living for Erie. Thank you very much. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you, Swayze, and thank you, uh, Ms. Mormon. Um, we're very familiar with the, the programs that you offer in Fort Erie and uh, some of the events that you've had and we commend you on uh, the work that you do. In Fort Erie. I know that you've been very responsive whenever I've had to speak to you. Uh, uh, you've always been uh, very accommodating. And Swayze, I presume that you'll be at the flag raising on May the 1st? Yes. And you'll be speaking usually? Yes. Usually you do. Yes. Okay. Good. I'll be looking forward to it. Do any members of the council have any questions of the delegates? Councilor Pasiro? Thank you, Worship. Well done. 
So Thank well you. Done. And we're proud to have you as a part of our community. Thank you. I, I've been fortunate to have uh, some great people assist me at the Kinsman Pool over the last couple of years from Community Living. And my question would be if there are other organizations in town that would like to have tremendous individuals uh, such as yourself, um, how would they get in touch with Community Living and how does that process work? Uh, if they just call in, we're on the website and the number for our office is there, just call in and they can speak to uh, the receptionist and she'll connect them with the person that is probably most likely to be dealt with. But the other, um, I can introduce while she's here, <laughs> um, Margaret Fiddler is responsible for the, all of the fundraising and our volunteer programs. So she, anyone would be connected with Margaret and she has lots and lots of people that need volunteer positions or opportunities to learn employment skills, anything at all. Excellent. Year, year in and year out, Community Living continues to be one of the stellar organizations in this community, so congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Any other counselors? Thank you very much. Thank you. That takes us to our final delegation, uh, Mr. Patrick Fairfowl and Mr. Jim Valicat. Mr. Fairfowl will do the speaking. Yes, sir. Perfect. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members. My name is Patrick Fairfall, and I have with me my neighbor, Jim Valiquet. Would you raise your hand, Jim, or stand if you can? Can you see him back there? Okay. Where are the, uh, well, could I actually, do you have a copy of the map that I sort of roughly drew up there? And can I ask, has everybody here, of all the council members, had a chance to ever uh, be in the McAfee Cemetery? Are you familiar with it? Okay, so you're, you're aware of what's going on there as far as the structure of it. But this is an aerial map then, just to familiarize uh, us all of what's going on here. Uh, looking down, the top of the map is north, and uh, the two residents you can see at the very top there, the first is Jim Valiquet's, and the next one is my property. Now, I want to point out also that you, the yellow border area that I drew in there, it says cemetery expansion area. That is approximately the, the, the ground that this, the town is uh, proposing to buy and, or pass the bylaw on. Now, if you look at the top yellow line or the north yellow line, I want to make it known that my property actually exists on the other side of that, all that treat area. My property extends down and as far as the top of that yellow line. So again, and I am planning with uh, all the proper town approvals, of course, and everything to uh, clear that area, erect the house there and tear down the existing structure. So again, I will be expected, the property will be affected by the new cemetery as well. Um, okay, now I, I, the first page there, I'm sorry, it kind of sounds demanding, but we're not here demanding things, it, uh, but it says McAfee uh, Cemetery, McKenzie Street Access and Expansion, and that's what we're, we're here about, is the expansion and the McKenzie Street Access. We, we, would, we do not want pedestrian or vehicle access into the cemetery from uh, McKenzie Street, the Thompson Road main entrance should be the only access to the cemetery, into the cemetery. Two, if the cemetery is expanded, we strongly oppose any extension of McKenzie Street to add access into the cemetery. And we would like to be consulted about any expansion plans if they develop. Now let me elaborate on that a little bit, please. Um, there, this sounds like a two-fold topic, access and expansion, but they're, they're one and the same. Uh, and before the bylaw is, is passed, we would like to make sure that uh, these considerations have been uh, reviewed. The, first of all, looking at the map again, the area that I have in red there with that circle, I don't know if you can read that or not. I mean, I can hardly read it. I think I wrote in there problem access area. Uh, that area never used to be there. The only entrance into the cemetery used to be straight off Thompson Road, and then you had your circle there, and everything worked fine there, servicing the, the, the grave sites, the whole deal, funerals and everything else. Now, over the years, as the cemetery expanded uh, westward from the circled area, or from the, the paved circle area there, the initial part of the cemetery, uh, things have been kind of getting chaotic. And uh, it's to the point where
looking at the map, McKenzie Street itself is a single lane. There is a no exit sign, by the way, at the top of McKenzie Street. But it's a single lane and it's gravel. And it's pretty much a laneway. You cannot get two cars side by side on that street without being over into the grass, which is, if it's been raining, it's, you'll get stuck in there. Um, <clears throat> sorry for, I'm just getting myself uh, back into line here. The turn, yeah. Okay, so when they added that turn at the bottom there, where, uh, for, and uh, access Mackenzie Street, rather than making that turn within the confinements of the cemetery and keeping it on total uh, on cemetery property, they, they access Mackenzie Street. Now, the reason, not against uh, street access to a cemetery, the problem is, as you can see, that's a very intimate setting. And what's happened is, Mackenzie Street has now become a part of the cemetery. Therefore, there's, uh, when the, the uh, cemetery, when there's a funeral, for example, the gravesite has to be prepared. There's heavy equipment that comes down there. And, and by in, any, in no way, shape, or form am I uh, contradicting the town. And all these things have to be done. The problem is, is that Mackenzie Street is the road, the main road that's being used for this. It's also now being used by all kinds of traffic that never used to use it, whether they stop in the cemetery to visit a gravesite or not. And they'll come in there, they'll do, use it for turnarounds, they'll come in, sit and talk in their their, their phones and then just leave. Um, but regardless of that, when the, uh, the construction has to come in or the, the maintenance of, for cutting the grass uh, that when they come in, they all come in roaring down McKenzie Street. And I use that word, there aren't any speed limit signs on that street. Uh, if you will drove, drove, were to drive down it today at a snail's pace, there's a dust cloud behind you. Now, uh, People come down there at 30 miles an hour, and I'm not kidding you. And I actually had one person, when I asked them to slow down nicely, tell me that there aren't any speed limit signs here. We can do 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour, excuse my age there, 80 kilometers an hour on this street if we choose. Um, the town's pretty respectful, but they, you know, they're driving tractors and dump trucks and things. I mean, you can only do so much with that. They're going to create dust no matter how you look at it. But anyway, Mackenzie Street pretty much becomes a construction site which we have no control over or uh, when, there's, when there's a funeral. Funerals themselves, there have been times where Mackenzie Street and the cemetery get entirely filled up with cars. When the cars are parked there, there's no entrance to Mackenzie Street or no access. You certainly can't get out of my, my driveway or uh, neither could uh, Jim. Now that's at times, it's not all the time, that's at times, depending on the size of the cemetery. Uh, people, now the reason we kind of mentioned pedestrians there is because people will walk, uh, oh back to the map again please, Thompson Road, the main, the main road going in there, there's an iron fence there, a boundary fence. Now if you look at the southern street that's down there that really, it's not a factor, there's a row of trees but there's also a boundary fence there. And there's a boundary fence at the end there that actually uh, struts northward and then goes westward again. Mackenzie Street has no boundary fence whatsoever. So pedestrians, when they're in the cemetery, well sometimes if they feel the urge to urinate, they walk across Mackenzie Street and peed into that little, the little bush area that's there. I've seen it happen many times. And of course, because it's a funeral, uh, uh, like a, I mean it's a, a cemetery, you really, there's not an awful lot you're going to be able to say to people out of respect for why they're there and all that kind of thing. So it's, mind you, I have uh, policed the cemetery on my own. I was kind of a self-appointed gatekeeper for many, many years, and things have worked well. I think I've had to call the police a couple of times, once for sure that I remember very, very clearly. And uh, I can't remember if I did, or, but the problem with the police is when there's something going on there that isn't supposed to, and we've, we've had kids come around on their motorcycles using it with no license plates on their things, using it as a racetrack. Uh, time you call the police, they're gone. And they don't have any license plates on their, their, their motorcycles, of course, and they kind of wave at you and away they're gone. So it, it, it's a problem. The dust is especially an issue. Uh, like I said, at the time, a Sinelos Place drive will create a, a cloud. Uh, so... Um, 
Parking. Yeah, parking on the street. People will come in and park on Mackenzie Street to visit a grave site with really with no consideration for the resident. It only takes one car to block a street. They'll come in and they will walk across the grass to go to a grave site. A lot of people who are visiting grave sites up at the, on the east side, up closer to Thompson Road, where that circled area is, the paved area that's there, they'll park in there. And rather than exit back onto Thompson Road through the circle that's there, the paved circle, I might add, and the other side of the cemetery also was paved, uh, they, they won't use that circle and go back out to Thompson Road. What they choose to do is drive all the way around and use Mackenzie Street when there was no need for, ever, for them to do that whatsoever. So we're kind of asking here that should the deal go through to purchase the cemetery, that we be included in any development plans that are there and that proper boundary fencing is going to be considered and, and, and respect for a certain amount of privacy for us as neighbors because I, I know that this is a special situation. Most cemeteries aren't designed like this where you can just get out of your car, leave it on the street, and then walk directly into the cemetery. I've never seen it actually except for this. And as I said, in the old days, it was never a problem because there was very, very little traffic and that access that's there now didn't exist. Well, I think I've covered everything I had to say. So, any questions, please? I usually get to ask that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so this, you've had communication with my office. Uh, yes, sir. Past with respect to this issue, and Diana Kelly, my assistant, has been very good at making notes. She has. Me. So that when this matter came up for discussion at the land committee, um, these concerns were were expressed, and uh, I presume that the town staff. Um, is now aware of what the issues are. Uh, certainly, I think it would be appropriate. Uh, I seem to have noticed a difference, thank you, a little bit about uh, them, their usage of Mackenzie Street, as far as town vehicles, actually. Right, so um, I'm going to let other councillors ask you any questions if they do. Your map is very good. It gives us a good indication of, of what the situation is and, and what the predicaments might be. I'm gonna guess that you're not thinking that we should be mm -hmm. um, upgrading Mackenzie to provide for more traffic? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, we're not against the expansion of the cemetery at all, but however, I mean, if, if that expansion goes through uh, and Mackenzie Street is allowed to be the access to it, I mean, the street's going to have to be widened and paved, just like the rest of the cemetery is. But we don't want to see that at all, actually. We'd like to see all the access to the cemetery and everything be confined within the cemetery. And basically, with this new property, if they do get it, I, I think that if they get the right guy designing it, that that can all happen. And, you know, it's, uh, cemeteries aren't made to be driving around in. They're made to be... You park your car and get out and you walk into the cemetery. And as it's turned now, it's kind of almost turned into a raceway. And um, so we'd, we'd really like to see this addressed. Any members of the council have any questions of Mr. Fairfall? I think we, um, you've given a very good presentation. The map is very uh, helpful. So I think we have a good understanding of what your concerns are, yours and Mr. Valicat's. So thank you very much. Great. Okay. Thank you for giving me the time. Thank you. That then completes uh, the delegations. That takes us to the consent agenda. Are there any items that anyone wishes removed from the consent agenda? If not, Councilor McDermott, you have the resolution to deal with consent agenda items. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Butler, that Council approves the consent agenda items as recommended. The uh, resolution is on the floor. Are there any questions or comments about any items within the consent agenda? If none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. That then takes us to uh, new business uh, and inquiries. And the first item uh, relates to the 2018 capital budget. Councillor Zanko, you have the resolution. 
Yes, thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Nutt, that Council amends the 2018 capital budget to include project MACE 18, McAfee Cemetery expansion, with a budget of $60,000 to be funded with $45,000 from the major capital expenditure reserve and $15,000 from the cemetery improvement reserve. Are there any questions or comments? Councillor Pizzurro? Uh, thank you, Worship. Just in light of the presentation we just received, if I could ask a question through you to our staff. I, I believe it's only w been within the last decade, maybe even less, that we've actually assumed responsibility for McAfee Cemetery. Um, do we have plans going forward to really formalize some of the interior roads, maybe add the wrought iron fencing that I believe he was referring to that you would find at Greenwood that would prevent the access from Mackenzie Inn, um, certain things like that that we have in our other cemeteries that we've maintained for a lot longer than we have McAfee. Mr. Cookett. Through your worship uh, to the councilor, you are correct. Uh, we acquired this a few years back. Um, the, the offer to purchase this property came on uh, fairly quick I should say fairly quick, it's been a year, but we wanted to do some assessment of the property. So uh, it's just now that we're looking at it and trying to determine the best way to develop that property. Uh, we hadn't put a lot of thought into it at this point, and we, we, we don't have any preliminary designs on road fabric and that makeup. Uh, but moving forward, we will be looking at things like perimeter fences, uh, road access, best place for the roads, and, and to basically get the, the best bang or the, the most number of graves in this particular property. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cookett, and we will keep the uh, two individuals appearing tonight uh, in close loop as far as what our plans are going forward. That would be very prudent for us to do, but I'll let Mr. Cookett answer. Uh, through your worship, we will do that for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Councillor Zanko. I thank you, Your Worship. Um, in light of the presentation this evening and through you to Mr. Walsh, I'm wondering if maybe... Um, Mackenzie could be added to the dust treatment uh, listing just to provide residents with some relief of the dust that was mentioned in the meantime. Mr. Walsh. Uh, Mr. Mayor, unfortunately, this is a Mackenzie is a surface treated road and dust suppressant will not uh, work properly on that. Uh, I have ma made a note about uh, future surface treatment on there uh, due to the sensitivity of this situation. Councillor Zanko. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments on this resolution? All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Councillor Butler, you have the next resolution. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McDermott that Council accepts the resignation of Brian Wright from the Communities in Bloom, Bloom Committee and further that Council directs staff to proceed with filling the vacancy in accordance with the procedural bylaw. Are there any questions or comments with respect to the resolution? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Councilor McDermott, you have the next resolution. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Butler, that Council accepts the resignation of Noel Labou from the Bridgeburg Station Downtown Business Improvement Area Board of Management and further that council directs staff to proceed with filling the vacancy in accordance with the provisions of the procedural bylaw. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? <coughs> None opposed, that is carried. Uh, Councilor Pasero, you have the next resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Zanko, that council appoints Leah Fior to the Environmental Advisory Committee for the period ending November 30th, 2018. Are there any questions or comments with respect to the resolution? All those in favor? No one opposed, that is carried. Congratulations. Uh, Councillor Nutt, you have the next resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zenko. The Council appoints Owen Riel to the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee for the period ending November 30th, 2018. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Councillor Zanko, you have the next resolution. Yes, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Nutt, that Council direct staff to implement the recommendations from the Office of the Ombudsman set out in report dated April 18th, 2018. Are there any questions or comments about that? 
Okay, uh, I think I'll just comment that this was, uh, this undoubtedly uh, was a closed session that council went into and the ombudsman has found that um, we shouldn't have, although now we could have because the rules changed. Um, and also there may have been some other um, sections under the um, Municipal Act that we could have had resort to. So it's a, it's a technical uh, failure to um, um, deal with this issue in open session. Uh, nonetheless, the Ombudsman has provided his report and uh, uh, nothing of substance occurred as a result of the meeting so that uh, one could say no harm, no foul, but uh, the Ombudsman takes the position that technicality is a technicality and since I'm a lawyer, I tend to agree with that. So uh, we'll call the question, all those in favor? Unopposed, that is carried. The Councillor Passero, you have the next resolution. Yes, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zanko, that Council of the Town of Fort Erie refuses to accept the unilateral decision of the Niagara Parks Commission to reject the support of assistance from the Town of Fort Erie and the region of Niagara to facilitate the Millers Creek Marina Resort development and further, that the Mayor is directed to send a letter to the Chair of the Niagara Parks Commission requesting an explanation as to A, the status of the Marina Resort project, B, timelines for the project, C, what expertise the Niagara Parks Commission intends to rely on to move the project forward, D, what engagement there has been with the only interested entity in developing the project over the past six months, E, how much money the Niagara Parks Commission has spent in RFP and associated processes over the past four years, F, whether any provincial ministry has provided any directives to the Niagara Parks Commission with respect to a marina resort development at Millers Creek. G, what assurances, if any, the Niagara Parks Commission can provide the marina resort project is of interest to it. And requesting the Niagara Parks Commission to reconsider having the town of Fort Erie and the region of Niagara be part of the project management team and further, that the mayor, CAO, and EDTC general manager are directed to arrange meetings with appropriate provincial ministers in conjunction with the regional chair and staff to determine how to best bring the Millers Creek Marina Resort Project to fruition, and further, that a copy of this resolution be sent to the chair of the Niagara Parks Commission, the chair of the region of Niagara, EDTC general manager, the mayors of Niagara Falls and at Niagara on the Lake, all Niagara MPPs and MPs, the Premier of Ontario, and such provincial ministers as seem appropriate. Thank you. This relates to a correspondence item 9.2I, which was a letter addressed to the Mayor and the Regional Chair regarding the Niagara Parks Commission. And uh, the offer of assistance to the Niagara Parks Commission by the town and the region. Uh, does anyone have any comments that they want to make with respect to this or questions? Councillor Nutt and then Councillor Passero. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, as our representative on the Niagara Parks, um, could you just lay out how the chair is placed in that position? Is it a provincial employee or is it done by election? No, the, the chair is, a, is an appointee of the provincial government and uh, the Niagara Parks Commission reports to the provincial government. So it's fair to say that uh, we can approach the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport in regards to this. I know at AMO in the past we've had several conversations, but at this point, this chair has been uncooperative for three years that we've been working on this and uh, has not lent a great deal of support and help to it and has stifled the process several times through wasted, wasting the taxpayer money at the end of the day, um, or or their own revenue, I guess. I, I know they generate, you know, they're, they're attempting to be self-sustaining in their generation, but um, at this point, I think that I would ask that we challenge, or you challenge the chair on behalf of the town of Fort Erie, or go to the province and ask that uh, we, we don't have the, confidence in the current chair I think the resolution um, speaks to that um, and it's not just the chair it's a it's a commission there's a there's a um, 
a board of commissioners which uh, makes the decisions of the Parks Commission. This goes back some period of time. Um, I don't know that it benefits us to make this personal. Um, maybe we, maybe some of us think that there are some personality issues, but I think that we should maintain a focus on the actual project, which is um, an excellent project. Uh, I think we all agree that's why we're taking uh, taking this particular step. Um, so I've heard what you've said, Councillor Nutt. Um, I've had many, many conversations with the, re with the uh, chair of the Niagara Parks Commission. We have uh, about this. We have had uh, discussions, you're quite right, with uh, a number of ministers over the years with respect to this marina project, which we believe is a good project, not only for the town, but for the Parks Commission and for the region and really for the province. Uh, it's, a, it's an attractor. Uh, it's a... It's, foreign investment really that would be coming into uh, Niagara and it would uh, help provide uh, a center of, uh, of activity in the, um, in the upper Niagara River or the south end of the Niagara River which isn't currently there. So um, this resolution I believe will send a, a fairly a solid indication of, of what the council's feelings are about how this has been unfolding, and I would hope that we'll get some responses. The The resolution, I'm sure, wasn't um, created without uh, a lot of thought and consultation by those who were involved in it. And, uh, you know, the, let's face it, I hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm not unsympathetic to your concerns because there are a lot of people in this community that think this project um, is long overdue and, and uh, had momentum at one point to move forward, seems like there's um, there's been a lot of circling uh, with respect to this and not a lot of forward momentum. I can tell you that um, the CAO did receive notice uh, to attend a meeting on May the 1st uh, with uh, the Parks Commission and uh, another government agency. I think that's more or less a fact finding, uh, further fact finding. Um, we would like, I think, as a council, this project to move forward. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but I guess we'll know when we get to the vote. Did you have any further comments, Councilor Matt? Yeah, uh, yes, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just extremely frustrated with the process. I mean, a one-legged duck swims in a circle, and that seems to be all we're doing here. But um, my point about not having confidence in the chair is she openly tells us that she supports it, but it doesn't seem that the staff that and I'm a true believer that behavior reflects leadership so what she's saying to us is not the actions that are flowing out of that organization and um, I agree this is a strong message and I you know uh, the um, uh, I, I like hope it gets I, the point across. I like that about the duck um, I think that uh, I, I think that the inability to move this project forward um, may be an indication of a number of things. Um, commitment is one aspect. There are some other aspects of it that I'd really prefer not to get into um, in public, but um, I think this will send a message, and you've certainly made your, your feelings known about this, as you have in the past. Councillor Passero. Uh, thank you, Worship. I recognize that the NPC, a NPC, uh, the majority of their meetings are closed and you are not even at liberty to discuss with your own council what's happening. So that's frustrating on one level. The composition of the board, I recognize there's one vacancy currently, as I read from the website, unless it hasn't been updated. But do ministry appointees outnumber the ex officio appointees such as yourself, Mayor Diodati, the regional representative, so the commission is made up of 12 individuals. Uh, that includes the uh, directly appointed uh, chair. There are four elected officials, one representing each municipality, Fort Erie, Niagara Falls, Niagara-on-the-Lake, and the region. So there are four um, appointees who are elected to the positions uh, that, they, that they get to, and the Parks Commission legislation uh, provides for those elected officials to be appointed or at least someone from their councils to be appointed. 
The others, so the other eight, including the chair, are all appointed by the provincial government. And um, historically, there were most of the appointees would be from this area. That's changed. That changed quite dramatically maybe uh, seven, eight years ago when the provincial government uh, removed all, all but a few of the appointees and replaced them with um, assistant deputy ministers or high senior uh, public servants. They remained in place until about three or four years ago. Some of them uh, that are on the commission are still um, former senior public servants. Um, and uh, their, their abilities are beyond um, question. They're very intelligent people. They're very successful people in the fields that they occupied at the time. Um, and uh, they're not necessarily connected to Niagara, so they may not have that firsthand uh, uh, personal um, connection with uh, Niagara. Presumably the provincial government uh, likes it that way, but they wouldn't keep appointing people from Toronto. Now, of recent appointments, and there, there, there has been uh, a vacancy just filled. Uh, the individual attended her first meeting last Friday. There is another uh, individual who grew up in Niagara Falls, uh, but um, uh, lives in uh, Oakville now. He's a professional. So the people, the appointees can't be faulted for their for the, the quality of their um, uh, character or their attributes that they bring. Um, there's something maybe missing by not having that local flavor. So if we have 12, I'm going to assume we can rally the four that are local, three municipalities, one regional, which means we have to convince three of the other eight to see it our way. I'm guessing we need seven of the 12 although I'm not sure how things are done there. I know more about how a pope is selected than I do about how the Parks Commission makes their decisions. Well, the pope, why, Parks why haven't we been able to convince the other three? Is, there, is this basically at the point now where we're going to the ministry and asking them to order their appointees to vote this way? It's been a number of years now with these same individuals. Are we taking this to the next level or are we still cognizant? I'm assuming that staff serve at the pleasure of the board. If the board were to say yes, build this marina with these people, would staff not be directed and act accordingly? Staff of the Parks Commission are no different than staff of the town of Fort Erie. They take their directions from the commission. Yep. So, I, so I don't fault staff. I know there's a lot of people out there saying it's staff, you know, styming this, slowing this down. I don't know if there's truth, not truth, but at the end of the day, it's the board that is responsible for providing that direction and that directive and I'm just wondering why we have not been able to convince seven of the 12. You're, you're our representative there. We have to trust in you uh, to get this done for us because none of us know what is going on in those meetings. Is there anything else we could be doing or do you think that this resolution is our best shot right now? I believe that, I believe that the resolution has the best uh, opportunity for us to at least try to move this forward. Um, part of it, the last resolution, the last paragraph, that, or second last paragraph, that deals with uh, meeting with uh, provincial ministers, that takes it beyond where it is right now. But we've done that at AMO. We, this, we this has been a constant thing on our AMO schedule for going on seven years now that, I, that I've been sitting in this same chair. And I'm just wondering, is that now going to take it to the next level? What exactly is the holdup here? Or are you not at liberty to say because of the NPC? muzzle that's on you as our representative. Well, there's a lot of things that go on in, in, in closed session meetings, but you know, the, the board hasn't been um, uh, made up of the same people over the past few years. There have been a number of new uh, appointees recently, and over the past uh, four years, there, there are probably three, uh, three or so new members. Uh, is this, is this a, like, are, are we pursuing something that's flawed? Because the project has not changed from our point of view what we'd like to do, the entity in, uh, interested has not changed, but yet you're saying that even new people coming on fail to see it our way. Are, are we in the wrong here as far as pursuing something that's failed and they're the ones getting it right? I, I just don't buy that, that there's been this constant changeover, but yet we're still ending up with the same result. Well, Councilor Pasiro, look, look at it this way and look at it from the perspective of the letter that we received from the regional chair. They own the land. 
the NPC chair. The NPCA yeah. owns the land. They're the ones who can decide whether a project proceeds or doesn't proceed. This isn't the only item that they, they deal with. And some of them may be sympathetic to this particular project. Some of them may not be. Uh, the ones that are new are um, advised about what the history has been. There seems to have been some, some poisoning of the well, uh, unfairly, in my view, arising out of the Maid of the Mist uh, situation that arose several years ago. So now you've got a Parks Commission that um, is trying to follow processes, um, perhaps being overly bound by processes, and we're looking for ways to try to move this forward. Um, and so we have, we have somebody that we're trying to persuade to do something. We have a provincial government that doesn't appear to be wanting to intervene. Uh, had they wanted to intervene, they could have done this a long time ago because we have had a number of meetings, not just this council, but the previous council, I'm sure, has, has tried to get this thing moving forward. There had been a, a, uh, an entity that was quite willing to try to move uh, this project forward. Um, they're, they've been somewhat uh, um, sidelined, and so even they don't know where they stand. The fact that they would still be interested, and I'm not sure that they are, but the fact that they would still be interested after this length of time is, is quite remarkable. I, I so, give credit to anybody that still is. Right. I, I really do. Uh, so, I think Councillor Nutt made that comment uh, a few months ago. It would be amazing to see who steps forward to deal with this type of bureaucracy and getting a project of this size going. So I the, hope somebody's still out there, and I hope that this is the start of a, a new path or maybe a different path, hopefully going to a different conclusion. But uh, I'm, I'm willing to support this tonight, but I know that the people I talk to in the community are growing ever frustrated that it continues to hit a brick wall. Well, you know, Councillor Pissarro, it's no different than, than somebody coming forward to the town of Fort Erie with something that they want to do. And we have certain jurisdiction and authority. And if we, if we see it their way, that's great. If we don't, that's a, bit of a, that's a bit of a problem for them. And so we're trying to, at this stage of the game, we're trying to get a, a square peg into a round hole and trying not to damage the peg or the hole. Uh, we don't understand, I'm, I, you're quite right. I'm, I have, uh, I'm privy to a lot of the information. It's as baffling to me as it is to those in the community who don't get to sit in and, and listen to what goes on or see what goes on. It seems to me that this resolution um, is a good indication of the frustration that this council has felt now for the period of time that we've been here. I would dare say that it's reflective of the frustration of uh, previous councils that have had to deal with this. I mean, if you think about it, I was the mayor in 2005 when this whole process started so that um, Whatever anyone else's frustration might be, mine is, uh, mine is ground root, ground level frustration. And uh, so I think this is the, the way that we can move it forward. Um, we have to persuade, we have to cajole, we have to um, pressure. And that's, those are whatever other tactics there might be available. If we want this to happen, we're gonna have to take a stronger initiative I mean, we've, we've had a number of meetings over the years, the regional chair, uh, I, the economic development people, our CAOs, a uh, councillor not has been involved, and uh, it looks like you're making headway, and then all of a sudden, you're not making headway. So it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating, for sure. No, it's, it's, it's definitely frustrating. I, I know you've had conversations with, with each of us, and, and uh, just where we are now hasn't borne out the way that uh, we were kind of told it was going to go. So I appreciate the work on this, and hopefully we see better results in the months ahead. Any other questions or comments? Councilor McDermott. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I tend to agree pretty much with everybody else. I've lost any sense of confidence that I ever had in the MPC over the last number of years. Um, this has just been a fiasco and futility that we've been going through forever. Um, when we first looked at this project, it was, uh, it was huge. It was something that uh, people would grab onto. And then we had subsequent open houses to that, in which case the project becomes, you couldn't even discern the first picture 
of the project uh, put forward by Warren Dag to any picture that has come forward in any of the open houses. So I think it's pretty clear the message we're getting from the MPC is they might want to keep a marina there. And even then, I don't know if they will because they really don't know too much about marinas. They don't even want to have the one that we have set up right now running properly. So I'm not buying that they want this program. They, they, but we've, they've changed their minds so many times. It's really and truly pathetic that a professional organization that once was revered in this area has come to this type of leadership. Um, I'm not going to call for the chair's resignation. I'll let the people that take care of that do that. But I don't really have any confidence because I think the MPC have been trying to talk their way out of this project. And uh, <clears throat> every time we're listening to something, is something new. I don't think they want this project at all. And I think any reasonable thinking person would come to the same conclusion. So either just say that and move on or quit fooling around. That's the way I look at it. Um, so I will support the motion tonight, and I think it's very timely. Anyone else? Well, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the resolution? None opposed. That is carried. Uh, are there any other inquiries or items of new business? Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. I was wondering if we could ask staff if they could prepare a report for council to consider on uh, options for enhanced services at our public parks and spaces and trails, um, just similar to what they're starting to do in Ridgeway BIA and the downtown BIA. Mr. Walsh, is that something you're doing in any event? Yeah, we can prepare a, a report on that, outlining uh, timelines and uh, budgetary considerations. Just one more question to that, if you don't mind. Not at all. Um, is there any way that you can just give us a, a rundown um, with respect to what kind of recycling is available down in the downtown cores right now? Because really the only ones that I've seen is in front of the post office, and it's both the plastic and the paper. So I'm just wondering where the other ones are, are spread out. Mr. Walt. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, in the fall of last year, we installed, I'm positive, um, I believe 20, 20 blue recycling cans uh, throughout the Ridgeway BIA. They are twinned with the existing black trash cans. So the, uh, the blue cans will take your traditional recycling, cans, bottles, refuse, etc. Uh, in front of the post office, there's actually go going to be a a third bin installed to accept uh, paper products. There was a, a complaint uh, or a number of complaints in that area about uh, people uh, discarding their their junk mail. Uh, so that's why we've put that in. Sorry, one last final sure. question. Um, currently, um, Amterra is um, scheduled to come down the Ridgeway cores twice a week, and on some occasions they don't make so is there any way in your negotiations to... Mr. Walsh. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, enforce is maybe a strong word there. Uh, there's no way I can enforce it, or we as the town can enforce it. We don't hold the contract with them. Uh, we can phone the region and uh, complain about the service. So, so, so if that occurs, if, uh, if someone could alert our staff to that, then they can make the contact. To breach a contract and they should be complying with it. Sure. Councilor McDermott. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just had a few questions uh, of Mr. Walsh with regards to the downtown area. I just uh, want you to remind uh, Council, in BIA areas, is the garbage pickup and the services that we do for each one, are they exactly the same? Through you, Mr. Mayor. No, they're not exactly the same. They're similar. Uh, there may be different uh, days of pickups and frequencies, uh, but it, when, when it comes right down to it, yes, they are the same. 
Um, I, I just want to ask you a couple of questions about spring and summer maintenance of the uh, back alleys and the um, the town's property within the BIA. Can you tell me, um, like big the, the the alleys and the uh, weed whacking of some of the areas around the municipal lots? Uh, uh, what type of frequency are they done during uh, that the summer and spring months? Uh, the alleys are uh, are a contracted service in terms of mowing. Uh, they get a they get addressed um, twice in the spring, twice in the fall, and then monthly through the summer. Okay, so uh, as you well know, uh, Mr. Walsh, I've had some complaints with regards to uh, garbage pickup down at the north end. Some I agree with, some I don't. But I think the, the question is, and I'm just wondering if you think the same way that, as I do, that the increased litter and garbage is because of the increased amount of residents in the apartments uh, throughout the North End. Mr. Walsh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't necessarily subscribe to that. Um, winter and early spring is always a tough time for, for garbage. Um, it gets buried in snow banks and doesn't come to light until they, they melt. Um, as we've discussed uh, ad nauseum tonight, there are a, a, a number of garbage cans, and in response to uh, overflowing cans through, throughout town in all of the BIAs, we've instituted, a, in partnership with the region, a recycling program, which hopefully should address a lot of the issues. Um, but we, we do have issues with, uh, as any community does, uh, with people just that just throw their garbage anywhere they want, uh, illegal dumping, et cetera. Every community faces it. Um, I read in uh, the Niagara set of newspapers today, I don't know what they're called anymore, the Standard, the Review, and the Tribune, um, that uh, this past weekend with Earth Day, uh, there were numerous, numerous, numerous uh, small committees set up to clean up parks and road allowances and everything. It is a service that the town itself does not provide. Uh, we don't have the man, man, manpower for it, forces. Uh, we do count on the goodness of, uh, of our community in helping to keep it clean. Councilor McDermott. Uh, yes, just one more thing, uh, Your Worship. I don't want to sound like I would be accusatory because I know Mr. Walsh's department has done a great deal of uh, work on our behalf as working on the back alleyways that uh, behind the post office and, and uh, uh, different types of signage. Um, and I understand the, the angst of the BIA, I do, uh, but I think that people really have to... Uh, take a grip on themselves and take a look at the areas that you're, you're hanging out in and making sure that you're part of the solution by picking things up rather than being part of the problem and littering throughout the community. Um, this is a beautiful community and when, it, when it's taken care of, it looks really good. So, you know, I guess that's my best advice to the public is to take care of the community. If you see litter, pick it up and don't be part of the problem. I'd be part of the solution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor McDermott. Very wise words. Councillor Nutt, we got that duck still going in a circle? He's still going in a circle, Your Worship. <laughs> I'm sure he's swimming out by the marina. Um, through yourself to Mr. Brady, I have a resident who uh, recently is, uh, had a committee of adjustment uh, decision that she's considering appealing at the OMB. What what's the town's responsibility in a situation like that? Like, what would their normal procedure be um, if that were to occur and that appeal went forward? So this is an appeal of a minor variance. Correct, Mr. Brady. If the uh, individual wishes to appeal the minor variance, they can do so. They can bring in the doc, the, the forms and the and the uh, check to the clerk's office. I believe it's the clerk's office, and the uh, if there is a uh, uh, a hearing that's held, the uh, town staff will attend if they're subpoenaed. Will that come to council to decide? No. Will we decide council if we send has, staff or not? 
Council has made, oh, whether you want to, want to send staff. Uh, certainly Council can direct uh, us to attend uh, the Committee of Adjustment uh, to the hearing itself, but uh, it's been our practice that when it comes to Committee of Adjustment, we only attend the hearing if we're subpoenaed. Councilor Nutt. Uh, yes, thank you. I just wanted to know if uh, Council disagreed with the decision. Um, if we were to direct staff not to attend? Well, we can't really direct staff not to attend in, viola in contrary to a summons. Okay. Um, the best that we could do would be to, um, we could appeal the decision if we don't agree with it, but uh, I think the uh, decision of the Committee of Adjustment probably followed uh, information provided by staff. I don't have an answer to that question. I don't if, know if, if it did, did or not, it, I that, that might be something don't have that, that information might want to look further. I will contact planning. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that we're talking about the same application for minor variance. I think we may be. Um, so that's something, though, that the resident uh, may be able to confirm with you one way or the other. And if, in fact, the committee of adjustment um, disregarded planning staff advice, then she would want to summon the. Uh, the uh, planning department, uh, the director, whoever would have prepared the report to give evidence at the uh, at the hearing. Anything further? No, thank you. Okay. Any councillor councillor Zango, then councillor Pasuro. I thank you, your worship. I actually just have a question, um, just for my own uh, knowledge, further to councillor McDermott and councillor Butler's uh, comments and questions regarding BIAs. Um, as you know, Ward 3 doesn't have a, a business um, improvement association. We don't have a BIA. And um, many of the businesses in Ward 3 complain of garbage, um, and they pick up the garbage themselves looking after their business. We've never sent town staff to pick up additional garbage, or we've never even had an option um, for that. We actually don't even have many garbage bins, if you look in the business area on Garrison Road. Um, so I, I guess my question is, wouldn't your BIAs, I know there's a levy, wouldn't they have the option of contacting the region and perhaps uh, arranging an additional pickup directly through their levy with the region? Mr. Walsh, would you know the answer to that? Uh, they can they can participate in uh, conversations with us, but the region's agreement is with the town for collections, and then we levy in turn the BIA. So if if they want more collection, uh, I don't think we're opposed to it. It's just a matter of their membership and and them coming to an agreement with the region. Councillor Zanko. Oh, okay, that answers my question. Thank you, Councillor Pasuro. Um, thank you, Worship. In light of Councillor Lubert's absence, I know that he's Council's representative or liaison to uh, a number of different committees like we all are, and I know that some of those committees have alternate appointees. I'm just wondering um, if we have emailed out those alternate appointees or if we've reached out to members of Council to assist those committees in light of his absence. I know. Uh, I've assisted communities in Bloom in the past. I'd be more than willing to do that again for a couple of months. Uh, I know Councillor Zanko has expressed an interest to assist the SPCA as they have some events coming up. Um, so I'm just wondering through you to the clerk's department, is that something we could circulate to ensure that those committees still have a member of council attending and providing support? Madam Clerk. Yes, I'll have our legislative assistant look into whether which of these committees he's on and which ones he might have an alternate for but I'm not sure that he does. We, ha we are aware that Communities in Bloom is at a place right now where they do need to get more members, and we have spoken to them about that because they should be canvassing to get their members. Um, but we will look into it and see if there's anything that we can do. Okay. I I'm just speaking from a standpoint that I know currently as it stands, a member of council is considered part of quorum. So if they're already short on members and a councillor's not there, that affects quorum. So I'm more than willing to attend those meetings as is Councillor Zanko for SPCA. I I'm fairly confident SPCA has an alternate member appointed as a backup. I don't know about the other ones, but if we could circulate that and see which of us would want to sign up just to assist them and assist him in his absence, I'd be more than happy to do that. Madam Clerk, can you uh, 
Can you look into that and circulate some information before the next council meeting? Certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, anyone else before I go back to Councilor Nutt? Councilor Nutt? Um, just one last point to piggyback off uh, Councilor Passeros. I don't know that we had appointed a backup to EAC, but with the work that they do and the development we have coming up, I'd like to nominate Councilor Passero. Well, I think what we need to do is hear from the clerk and then, uh, and then we can find out what committees there are, what the process is, and you're volunteering, uh, you're, you're, you're volunteering someone to do more work. <laughs> How about all of the, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll, uh, we'll get that information from the clerk and then we can go from there. Any other items of new business or inquiries? Then um, that takes us to motions and Councillor Butler, I believe you're the acting mayor for the time being. Can I hand you the chair for this please? So that I can move uh, resolution. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And I believe um, under motions, Your Worship has a motion he would like to I do. speak about. Madam Clerk, I don't think I was given a formal form. However, I'll use I'll use what's in the uh, in the booklet. Okay. Oh, I need a seconder. Let's make second again. Yeah. If I might, Madam. Acting Mayor, I have, uh, I have a seconder now. I move seconded by Councillor Nutt that staff prepares a report advising Council of the advisability, potential partnerships, logistics, and costs of implementing a municipal tree planting program to counter the devastation of the emerald ash borer and to increase the town's tree canopy on public and private lands. Would you like to speak to that? Just very briefly. Um, I know that in the past there, there has been... Um, uh, endeavors by the municipality to try to um, add to our tree canopy here, uh, particularly when there have been uh, times of devastation, whether it's been by natural causes or uh, insect infestation. Uh, we do have, and Mr. Walsh indicated that uh, there will be this year uh, an opportunity for residents to uh, participate in a program that the municipality uh, has developed. And uh, there, there will be opportunities for individuals to plant trees on their own property. Um, but I'm thinking that we maybe need something a little bit um, more formal, or at least I'd like staff to maybe give us some advice with respect to that. With the possibility of maybe getting some of the um, uh, businesses in town that are engaged in uh, nursery type work, landscaping, what have you, to see whether we can uh, um, improve the tree canopy, counter the, uh, the emerald ash borer and some of the natural disasters we've had recently, and um, this would be, I think, a good community initiative, particularly in view of the fact that we have a Communities in Bloom committee, and that's part of what makes this, this community attractive. I've heard um, from a number of people expressing concern about the number of trees that get cut down while we're developing, and uh, you know that, that, that's half of the equation. The other half of the equation is making sure that we are responsive to not only protecting what we have, but uh, enhancing uh, what we have by adding new um, uh, uh, new trees, new shrubs, what have you. These would all be native species. I would, I would ask that when staff looks at this that they make sure that it's native species which are hardier and fit better into our uh, climate and environment. So I'm hoping that council will support this and uh, those are my comments. Thank you. Does anybody, uh, any member of council have any questions or comments? Councillor Pissiro. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just want to add the uh, organization Friends of Fort Erie Creeks as a possible stakeholder for staff to discuss. Um, they've been very successful in the past number of years about uh, helping us and assisting us with planting additional trees through fundraisers and different initiatives that they've undertaken. So they'd be a good place to start to see where things could go from a partnership point of view as far as our not-for-profit organizations. Thank you. Any other member of council? No? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you, and I'll return the chair back to you. Thank you very much, Councillor Butler. Um, so we have uh, a report 
to deal with. And um, part of that report has a closed session component. And I'm assured that we've got the right Municipal Act paragraph and that this does deal with a personal matter since it deals with a number of individuals. So, Councillor Zanko, are you bold enough to bring forward that motion? Thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Passero, that Council does now go into closed session at 7.35 p.m. to discuss the following. Pursuant to Section 239.2b of the Municipal Act 2001, Personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. RE Crystal Beach Secondary Plan Community Focus Group. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Solution that we rise and reconvene from closed session, and it would be with report. Yes, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zanko, that Council does now rise and reconvene from closed session at 8 p.m. with reports that Council proceed to appoint the members of the Crystal Beach Secondary Plan Community Focus Group. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? That is carried. And Councillor Brasseur, you have the resolution with respect to the Crystal Beach Secondary Plan Focus Group. Yes, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zanko, regarding Crystal Beach Secondary Plan Focus Group, that Council selects the following community volunteers to comprise the Crystal Beach Secondary Plan Community Focus Group from the list provided in Appendix 1 to Report Number PDS 26-2018. Longtime residents Kate Mullane, Stu McLeod, Hope Elliott, Pat Richardson, and Ruth Bruins. New residents Leah Fior, Bill Cutler, Luann Walker, Mike Reed, Jane Seaborn Davies, and Eleni Tateridis, and business owners Mike Hopper, Phil Smith, and Kirk Fretz, and further that council directs staff to notify selected individuals. Are there any questions or comments with respect to that? All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. That then takes us to notices of motion. Are there any notices of motion this evening? There being none, that takes us to consideration of bylaws. Is, does anyone wish any of the bylaws to be removed from the package? If not, then Councillor Nutt, would you proceed with first and second reading of the bylaw package? Certainly, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Passero, that bylaw package containing 56-2018 to authorize the sale of lot 177, plan 458, birdie, and lots 285 and 286, plan 469, birdie, zero, Champion Parkway, WS, to Kent and Greg, uh, Kent Gregory and Louisa Gregory, 572018 to appoint temporary municipal law enforcement officers for the Corporation of the Town of Fort Erie, 58, Dash 2018 to deem a certain registered plan of subdivision, not be a registered plan of subdivision, Marjorie and Michael Egan for 0 Ryan Avenue. 59 2018 to exempt certain lots in plan 435 from part lot control, lot 239, and part of lot 241 257 Ridge Road South for Luis Carlos Monza. Moniz, thank you, and Maria Jesus Pereira. 60 2018 to amend zoning bylaw number 129 90 as amended, removing of holding provision Dominion Woods Phase 2 Mountain View Homes Niagara Limited. 61 2018 to authorize the entry in a development agreement with Juliana Walter for 161 Nicholas Road. 62 2018 to adopt a policy for the use of corporate resources for election purposes for the town of Fort Erie and to repeal bylaw number 80-10. 63-2018 to authorize the acquisition of vacant land on the south side of Mackenzie Street from the estate of William Alexander Gates, increase the capacity of the McAfee Cemetery is given first and second reading. All those in favor? 
Unopposed, that is carried. That bylaw package is on the floor for any questions or comments. There being none, Councillor Zanker, would you proceed with third and final reading, please? Thank you. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Passero. The bylaws 56 2018, 57 2018, 58 2018, 59 2018, 60 2018, 61 2018, 62 2018, 63 2018 are given third and final reading. To be signed by the mayor and the clerk under the corporate seal. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed. That is carried. Councillor Pasiro, you have the next resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zanko, the bylaw number 64-2018 to confirm the actions of council at its meeting held on April 23, 2018, is given first and second reading. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. Councillor Butler, you have the next resolution. Uh, third and final reading for the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McDermott that bylaw number 64 2018 is given third and final reading to be signed by the mayor and clerk under the corporate seal. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. That takes us to scheduling of meetings. Councillor Nutt. Thank you, Your Worship. On Wednesday, we have the Waverly Beach Ad Hoc Committee at 5 p.m. in uh, meeting room one, I believe. That's on uh, the 25th, April 25th? Correct, yeah. Any other meetings? Councillor Passero. Thank you, Your Worship. We have the Accessibility Advisory Committee meeting tomorrow here at Town Hall, 4.30 p.m. in committee room number one. And if I could mention one other thing, Your Worship. Of course. Uh, coming up on May 2nd is the annual McHappy Day. Uh, once again, proceeds are going towards Big Brothers, Big Sisters. I'm a proud member of that board. I'd like to thank you, Your Worship, for signing up once again, as well as Mr. Jansen. And I would encourage any of my colleagues to participate, as well as town staff. We really appreciate it. It's a fun day, and I hope to see as many people out May 2nd. It is. I hope, I hope they can uh, get past my um, waitering services to at least generate some monies for, <laughs> for your, your worthy organization. Um, are there any other meetings, Councillor Nutt? Um, the fire awards, or the, fi the fire department is having the fire department awards on Saturday night. Volunteer firefighter and awards banquet. A, a little birdie told me you're going to be a, a rock star on the radio on Friday? No. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure they're not letting me sing because they want to have <laughs> members, but uh, CKTB is going to be in Fort Erie at the town hall on uh, Friday morning. Uh, April the 27th, between 8.30 and, well, I think they're starting earlier in the day. Yeah, they start, I think, I don't know, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Yep. So uh, I will be um, interviewed by CKTV at 8.30 here. So um, I'm going to try to get a good night's sleep so that I'm fresh for the interview. Um, the Service and Safety Awards are on Thursday this week. They are. That's uh, April the 26th, and that's at the Royal Canadian Legion. That's where we recognize the, um, the good work of our municipal employees. The um, Police Services Board does have their meeting starting at 8.30 on um, Thursday morning, April 26th. That goes until noon. And also on Saturday uh, at uh, 11.45 a.m. here at our memorial is the service for the National Day of Mourning. And uh, that's generally well attended by uh, representatives from the Labor Council and several of the larger unions. So everyone is welcome to be here. Um, generally some very thoughtful comments made by individuals. And this year in particular, uh, although last year I guess would be the same thing, Fort Erie should be very proud because we have had no lost days to injury over the last couple of years. And that is uh, a real tribute and I'll be sure to make sure that I mention that to my friends from the labor movement. Um, if there are no other um, meetings to be announced. Um, I know it's hard to believe, Councillor Nutt, but we had a meeting, we had two meetings, I think, when you weren't here. I heard. And 
We didn't adjourn them. They're still, so you'll have to adjourn I'll, them. All. I'll take care of that all at once, sir. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Zanko, that Council adjourns at 8.09 p.m. to reconvene at a regular meeting council on May 14th. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you.